Hey guys, here at osmvdxreviews.com. You're watching our video review of the Motorola i1. This is a very ruggedized Android-based smartphone that is on service with Nextel and Boost Mobile. As a result, this offers push-to-talk, walkie-talkie functionalities in addition to a host of um, element resistance the specifications that are military-specified to resist, resist dust, shock, uh, elements like uh, rainwater and also uh, salt water and stuff like that that uh, makes this device a very tough Android smartphone that is uh, very divergent from the norm because most handsets cannot withstand so much uh, you know, hardships in terms of day-to-day uh, -day work and um, you, know, you can't drop your phone and expect it to live, which is something that the Motorola i1 is certified to actually do so. So taking a look at in terms of the design, it's a fairly generic product, but it is very elegant and it is uh, nicely created. It feels really solid in the hand. It's a solid construction made out of soft touch materials, metals and plastics and also glass. So uh, overall it's a nice fusion of um, components. On the front of the device you have access to a speaker on the top which is very very loud. Also you have a pair of LED indicators so it's invisible when not activated but when activated these are e they are easily the, the brightest LED indicators I've ever seen on any Android smartphone. The low battery indicator is a white, uh, white LED that will flash on and it's going to be uh, visible from a mile away. And also below this we have a 3.1 inch capacitive multi-touch enabled touchscreen that displays quite uh, pretty vibrant colors and text images. You'll see that in a second. Below that we have access to the standard Android hotkeys which includes a menu, home, back, and volume key. These are capacitive and backlit so you will, you will be able to see them under darker conditions. You also have a 5-way navigation toggle for usage when you are in uh, conditions where you cannot use the touchscreen and it's very easy to press and very very tactile. You also have access to a talk and end key which doubles as a power on and off key as well as the microphone a component here which is very very large and uh, you will be able to talk and other people will be able to hear you quite easily. On the left hand side of the device, you have access to a walkie talkie push to talk button, which allows you to, you know, communicate with other Sprint Nextel phones like a walkie talkie when it's in the distance. You also have a rubberized volume up and down key, which is, uh, again, it's rubberized to prevent water from going in because um, it is, you know, rainwater resistant, not entirely water resistant, but very, very close to that because all the ports are sealed very tightly. On the bottom, we have a lanyard cord, we have a Motorola logo. On the right-hand side, we have access to a two-stage shutter key for the camera, which is a 5.0 megapixel camera. Also have a, a release key to release the back cover, which is otherwise basically uh, put on there permanently. So you have to press this button in order to release it and then pry it open. You also have the 5.0 megapixel camera. Below this little... Uh, Rubber, uh, a rubber door here is access to the micro USB charging slot. Um, it's protected again from any water entering the product. On the top of the device, you have access to a power on and off key, also doubles as the lock key, which uh, again is rubberized and uh, easy to press. Very tactile and very stiff. Also, we have access to a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack that is once again enclosed in this little door. So again, it's gonna resist dust and any other elements that might get in there. Of course, behind the back cover, you have access to a SIM card slot, which Boost is using for this model. Also, a micro, a micro SD card slot for expanding the memory on this phone. In fact, you have to have a micro SD card to play back music and take, take photos and videos with the built-in camera because there is no built-in flash memory. Um, you just have some basic RAM, and the processor here is basically around 600 to 700 megahertz, so uh, not very, very fast in terms of speed either. Now, the biggest disappointment of this handset is its uh, outdated operating system. Um, because Motorola decided they wanted to keep things very basic and no frills for the smartphone, um, it does have auto-connectivity options like Wi-Fi, GPS, Bluetooth, again, that 5.0 megapixel camera, which is quite high definition. Um, the main dis dif uh, disappointing function here is it only runs on Android 1.5, which is the earliest version that's entirely outdated by now. Thankfully, Motorola is releasing updates uh, right now, and you will be able to access uh, more current uh, uh, renditions of Android um, up to 2.2, I believe, at the moment. So um, you can update that and get more functions like pinch to zoom support for multi touching. Um, but at the moment, Android 1.5 is limiting that feature to only a few applications, so you have to be wary of that. Taking a look at the uh, operating system in terms of the interface, Motorola decided to not put in Motorola Blur on this phone, so instead it's very much uh, as is. Basically, it's a clean state version of Android. Uh, you have a few built-in app extras from Boost Mobile for walkie-talkie services and the such, but otherwise it's a very clean Android handset. On the home screen, you can see that you have a basic uh, clock, which Boost has customized to make very square-like. Um, you also have some basic applications here and a Google search uh, bar. You also have a voice searching application here where you can search using your voice. And um, 
you can use Google's locations and the such for the device to, uh, you know, search the web by telling it, you know, search Motorola, Motorola i1, and it will search that for you without having to type on the QWERTY keyboard, which is virtual. Uh, as far as battery life go though, this is one of the more disappointing aspects of this phone. It barely got through two days uh, with constant connectivity to Wi-Fi and, uh, you know, calling through our tests. And this means that battery life isn't, um, you know, as good as the company stated because for such a ruggedized phone, you would expect the battery life to also be extended in order for the phone to last longer. But again, it's very average in terms of uh, that performance and that aspect. You can see here that the screen is fairly bright and vibrant, but extreme angles does make viewing ang does make the screen a little bit blacked out and not as clean and crisp. But for the most part, it's a nice display, and text and images are uh, sharp and vibrant, so you will be able to enjoy text uh, videos and also enjoy web pages quite easily. So opening up the Android drawer, uh, we don't get a lot of extras. We have the web browser, the calculator, the calendar. We have a call, call lock, a, a camera, and a camcorder, um, a dialer pad, email applications, Gmail, Google Maps, uh, Google Talk, the media library. We also have Quick Office, uh, Office on here, though, which is a nice feature, which means we can access and, and create and edit Word, Excel, and um, PowerPoint documents without having to uh, go to in-depth of a MySign application. Uh, interestingly, uh, this device actually uses Opera Mobile as the default web browser in order to speed up applications because if you're using wireless data over Boost and Sprint's uh, network, IDEN network, uh, without you know using Wi-Fi, the actual speeds for loading pages is extremely slow because this uh, is basically a 2G you know experience. It's not 3G, it's not 4G or anything like that. So uh, Opera Mini will optimize your web pages to load as fast as this phone can handle it because of the slower network speeds. Um, but again, the range is really good for this phone, so I was never in a, in a place where I couldn't get any reception, which is a great feature. We have a marketplace for downloading more applications. We have a uh, portrait uh, sound enhancer and uh, again, voice search and also a YouTube application for watching YouTube videos. Another disappointing aspect is that YouTube playback uh, is extremely sluggish on this phone for some reason, even with the native client and using Wi-Fi. And as a result, uh, YouTube videos were hard to watch, um, which was something that we didn't really enjoy. As far as the web browser though, it is a good web browser. Um, we're able to browse the web and search quick Google text and the such uh, in a very efficient manner. Um, that said, it's nothing to write home about and uh, flash content uh, suffers and will be very slow and uh, very minimal. You can't really access all of those ad ads or videos by accessing the web browser directly. So if we're connected to Wi-Fi, we can look in the top of the device, have access to notifications for, for the micro SD card, uh, for the Wi-Fi, for the ringer, uh, for basically the volume. Let's turn on the volume. And we also have some missed call information, uh, airplane mode information, and the battery information next to the clock. So, for example, if we wanted to do a quick search on the internet, you can see that this device actually uses the swipe keyboard because the screen is smaller than normal. It actually doesn't use the regular Android keyboard. So, for example, if we wanted to search Motorola i1, we would slide our way through this. And um, I, I'm just going to type the last part because it's uh, kind of difficult for the device to recognize i1. And I will search that using, again, Opera Mini instead of the standard Android web browser. You can see it's a lot faster here. And um, of course, Opera Mini is a little bit more keen to uh, load the mobile version of web pages instead of the full version, but you do have the ability to actually select in the settings to load the full version. You can see that browsing through the web is a fairly easy experience. Kinetic scrolling is quite nice. However, there's slight amounts of stuttering, not as smooth as the highest end devices that we have on the market of today, but it's still entirely workable. And example is we can press on CNET's review of this product and that will load accordingly. You can see it's a mobile version, but so text is uh, nicely optimized for this phone and you don't have to do a lot of scrolling to read through things and check things. So overall, pretty powerful in terms of that department, just uh, could be faster, could be a little bit more smoother. So let's go home and uh, see if we can access more features. There is haptic feedback on this phone, so you will be able to hear a vibration whenever you press something on the button department. As far as phone functions go, again, we never really were in a place where we could not get a, a signal reception. So signal quality is extremely strong on this phone, as you might expect from such a ruggedized design. Walkie-talkie features worked great. Uh, communication uh, saved our costs greatly between these handsets in very close proximity. However, in terms of uh, sound quality and audio, uh, things were actually pretty good. Um, when we were calling people, uh, people said that they thought that we were actually talking on a land phone instead of talking on a cell phone, which is a great thing. There is actually slight amounts of noise isolating features built into this product. So if you're in loud environments like construction zones, you will still be able to hear your callers and still be, and the microphone will still make your callers be able to hear you. So that's another feature that uh, Motorola put in that we really appreciate of. 
Uh, as far as text, and text messaging goes, again, you can see the QWERTY keyboard is pretty reliant on the virtual swipe mode. You can also turn this device to a landscape mode in order to access a larger keyboard, but still, text messaging is one of the slower things on this handset because the screen isn't the largest uh, out there. Uh, it's a little bit small, uh, to be quite honest, but uh, you do get that um, option to do that. In terms of built-in extras, we also have apps and uh, direct access to CNN and ESPN for news. Also have Facebook and MySpace uh, uh, applications built right on into this product. Overall, the Motorola i1 is a very compelling handset, especially for uh, um, IDEN, also for you know Boost Mobile and uh, users out there that are looking for a higher-end device uh, or a smartphone that's going to be available for their market. Um, but you know they still want to retain that ruggedized design, and they don't, they don't want to you know leave the walkie-talkie features behind. Then you know the Motorola i1 is a great phone to get because it. You know, it merges so many different technologies. It's a very current and very uh, relevant smartphone, and yet has a very ruggedized uh, and certified, um, you know, element-proof spec sheet, which will impress most people, and at the same time make this a great buy for people who, uh, you know, work in a more dangerous and hazardous environment, or just want something that's going to be uh, more resistant to drops in general. So the Motorola i1 will be available on contract with $199.99 with a two-year contract with a Sprint and, uh, of course, Boost Mobile. So if you're interested in this handset, you can check our, out our full review at osmvtxreviews.com. But that's been it for our video overview, so thanks for watching here at osmvtxreviews.com.